Hello and welcome to another episode of Meta Sidekicks. My name is Liv. This is M. M, say hi. You're a towel. Also, my belly's in the way. I'm squishing the baby, so I'm moving my microphone. That's what you guys are hearing. Also, I need to tell you this. On Saturday, I went hiking up a waterfall, which Bradley told me not to do because he's like, you're seven and a half months pregnant. And I said, listen to me, man. You don't rule my life. (laughs) (laughs) And I did it anyways, and it was absolutely fabulous. I regret nothing except for the fact that He thought I was going to fall down the waterfall and kill myself and our child, which didn't happen. But I did step on the only bee in North America in a riverbed at that time. Why was there a bee in a riverbed? That's what I want to fucking know, too. (laughs) Like, you go hiking up a waterfall and you're in water and very clearly, like, next to it. How is that? How do I step on a bee? I don't know, but I think I would have died from anaphylactic shock (laughs) well very much like the crocodile hunter i pulled the stinger out and i didn't cry but did you go into anaphylactic shock i did not (laughs) (laughs) i also have a question what do you think it will make my baby stronger like is he gonna come out and he's gonna be like they won't be allergic to bees (laughs) i just want to know if it's like spider-man is he gonna come out and be like bee man? Well, it'll probably be like the same thing of you eating hot sauce, and his amniotic fluid is now covered in hot sauce and uh, bee venom. I also want to say that in addition to not crying and hoping that my son will come out bee man or like ant man, oh. that's what I'm saying. Like instead of catching him in his room at thirteen doing weird boy things, he's, he's gonna actually be a spicy bee. He's making honey. Is it so spicy? pollinates the world with like flowers i don't know but i also saw the honeybee that i stepped on and i did not smash it with a rock out of spite anger or angriness a honeybee stung you yeah and you smashed it i did not oh i was like it's already dead dude well it's it's already going to die so was it bad that i did didn't smash it out of spite or is it good that i didn't because why'd you step on it anger is not the answer because i didn't see it it's a riverbed i wasn't even near anything green just across the riverbed dude was just chilling out with some guppies and decided for my foot to be on top of him and it was not fun do you ever think about people that listen to us and how autistic adhd we speak <laughs> yes, because I edit these podcasts and sometimes get annoyed by myself. And then the other half of the time, I'm like, wow, that's interesting. We're funny. Because we literally just echolalia ADHD tangent. What are we even talking about today? Well, you always have like a fun fact or something. And I haven't seen you in a couple whiles. So I figured I'd tell you I stepped on a bee and I didn't cry. And. Mm, okay. Yeah, I have a fun fact. Did you know that ranch dressing helps depression? <laughs> I just ate some ranch dressing downstairs. I have been sitting next to the ranch dressing for like an entire two weeks. Fries with ranch dressing, pizza with ranch dressing, potato chips with ranch dressing, me with ranch dressing. That Depression. sounds kinky. Depression. <laughs> Anyways, That's my fun fact. <laughs> I just wanted to say I didn't cry. The first time I got stung by a honeybee was in between my toes and I was screaming screaming in pain like you know when you get hurt so bad like like it knocks the wind out of you Mm -hmm. and you can't breathe not because of anaphylactic shock (laughs) i don't know i've never been stung by a bee but my sister's allergic to bees and my dad's allergic to bees i think i might die if i get stung by a bee so if it ever happens you're gonna have to drive me to the hospital we're gonna wait in the parking lot and see if i die i also thought about that too (laughs) When I was sitting there going, I need to pull the stinger out of my toe. And I was like, I'm glad Emily's not here. (laughs) I did. I thought about that. Well, it'd be fine if I wasn't the one having to pull a stinger out of my toe. Because then we would we'd probably be dead because we're in a fucking riverbank and not in a car driving to the hospital. (laughs) I would suck the venom out for you. Oh, okay. Out of my foot. (laughs) Bradley would pee on it. Jesus Christ. (laughs) What is this turning into? Survivor. Uh, uh, Uh-uh. Anyways. We are psychic mediums, best friends, twin flames, and metaphysical comedians that talk about all things spiritual, metaphysical, paranormal, and in between in the most inappropriate and comedic way possible. We try to make it appropriate, but it's really hard because if you like... I'm sorry, I'm still thinking about you (laughs) sucking the venom out of my toe and I just need... (laughs) 
for free? <laughs> Sorry. Honestly, content creators, someone has to film it. Otherwise, we're not. For free? <laughs> You're welcome. That's all I needed to say. Jesus. Go on with whatever you were talking about. <laughs> we're doing listener stories today. Um, just like other paranormal or true crime podcasts that do listener stories, we read your stories because you're the listener. But in addition to that, we also give you the metaphysical insight as us being psychic mediums. We tell you if your ghost stories are actually with ghosts. <laughs> are you with ghost? Are you with ghost? <laughs> Got ghost for free? <laughs> okay, you get to go first because I'm going to eat some of this pop tart. <laughs> so... First story is Leprechauns Are Real by Christina N. (laughs) Of course. Leprechauns are my sign for no. And I'm getting a lot of my no signs. And I feel like something bad's going to happen. Is the world going to end? Everything's fine. I'm fine. You're in your Saturn return. Is that why I'm getting signs for no? (laughs) Everything's no. I've gotten like six tower cards. And um, I've been in my Saturn return for about three months. Do you have tarot cards on you? No. Damn. What? You should give me a reading. You should give me a reading. (laughs) I'm going through my Saturn return. Well, if all you're getting is tower cards and and things that say no, it's pretty self-explanatory. And (laughs) the astrologist you took me told wouldn't read my Saturn return. It's probably a lot of pressure. (laughs) I just needed to know that my life was going to blow up in my face in the first three months of it. (laughs) So, Leprechauns Are Real by Christina N. So sometimes I can see things that aren't really there. Or maybe it's just the other people can't see them. One day, I was rubbing my wife's feet as she watched TV, and I noticed a weird face behind her and was tilting its head side to side. I fucking hate leprechauns. I need to. I need you to understand that I'm pretty sure I had a past life as the kind of dragon that, like, guards treasure. And leprechauns to that kind of dragon is, like, mice to elephants. You know what I'm saying? Gives me the heebie-jeebies. That's why leprechauns are my sign for no. That's all you need to know. But reading this, saying that it's heads moving side to side. (sighs) Gross. I hate leprechauns. I like Lucky Charms, though. (sighs) Why do you like Lucky Charms? Because I couldn't have it as a child. So now that I'm an adult and I can buy it of my own free will and fruition. And you found out it's sadness and depression because it's just marshmallows and really bad tasting cereal. But you remember in college, our one friend would only get a bowl of <laughs> Lucky Charms and he would just pick out the marshmallows yeah, and leave nothing else. Yeah, because cereal tastes terrible. I think it tastes fine. No, it doesn't. That's privilege right there. <laughs> I know the lunch ladies would eye him. I think one of the lunch ladies actually was like, can you not do that? <laughs> Because you're wasting so much cereal. (laughs) Well, they should just not make Lucky Charms. I disagree. I disagree. (laughs) So, I saw very clearly a long pointed nose and a wide grin with teeth. (sighs) At that time, I had no idea what I was looking at until I described the alarming face to her. As I was telling her what I saw, I noticed that the face didn't have eyes, but instead a hat was covering up the eyes. God, I fucking hate leprechaun. She then said a couple of common beings' names that she was familiar with, like a demon and such, but nothing gave that, like, goosebump feeling, you know? I hate leprechauns. Until she said leprechaun, I knew with 100% certainty that she had a leprechaun around her, and just then, he showed me all the negativity that he'd been causing her. I heard him ask, why my family? And she couldn't believe how I knew what I knew. Apparently, when she was younger, she had dabbled in going into other dimensions, and she was given a mission to kill all the adult leprechauns. (laughs) Thank God. (laughs) And spare the children. I'm a very empathetic person and couldn't believe what she used to do. I felt that the leprechaun had been seeking revenge for what her and her friends did at a young age but he wanted an apology. After siding with the leprechaun, I tried to convince my wife to apologize for her past wrongdoings to him, but she is very hard-headed, and in the moment, I saw to my right a very large, bright light that appeared quickly to help me with the situation. It happened all so quickly, but I felt like that was her spirit guide, and her guide apologized on her behalf, and immediately I saw the leprechaun leave her side and enter a portal Ever since that day, she hasn't had any unlucky things happen to her, 
that couldn't be explained. I'm curious what you two pick up from the situation. Thank you for the reading. Christina, the empath. Also, if people can respond or like end their listener stories with funny, like sincerely the leprechaun from your story type deals, I would love that every second of it. (laughs) But anyways, is there a leprechaun? Because gross, I fucking hate leprechauns. I honestly don't know what to think about this story because when I read it, it was so unhinged that I cannot fathom the fact that a teenage tween girl and her friends decided to astral project into different dimensions and slaughtered this leprechaun's adult family. Yeah. Whether uh it's real or not, the fact that your wife, Christina, was like, eh, I'm not going to apologize, flabbergasts me to that fucking dimension and back. Like, you slaughtered an entire family of leprechauns. They probably have a past life as a dragon that guards gold. (laughs) Leprechauns are disgusting. It's like having spiders in your house. Spiders in that shit up. Burn that shit up. Yeah, but she didn't have a past life doing it. She. How do you know? They had past lives. She said she had. She worked in traveling dimensions as a teenager. Yeah, that could be this life. She could have a life as a dragon. I'm talking about <laughs> this life, though. I know, but she has an affiliation to hating leprechauns because I have an affiliation to hating leprechauns. Either way. You should apologize for slaughtering someone's family. You should apologize for missing one. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Disgusting. I honestly don't. I just, I don't. I feel like I can, I have too many egotistical opinions about this to make. Wait. Were educated. you a leprechaun in the, in the past life where I was a dragon that guarded gold? Probably fucking Lee. I mean, look how Irish I am. Are you fucking kidding me? I had a past life as a Celtic dude. It wouldn't fucking, like, (laughs) it would not escape me if I was a goddamn leprechaun to troll you as a fucking twin flame. That's what we do. It's disgusting. I hate leprechauns. I'm going to go with it. I don't even care if I don't have a past life as a leprechaun. I side with the leprechauns. Uh, I really fucking hate leprechauns. I don't even, I can't even tell you why. It's just, ugh. What do you think about the story? <laughs> like, seriously? hmm I don't know. I don't know that I believe that. <laughs> I mean, let's go out on a limb here and say that maybe it is past life things. Like, maybe you, they did have a past life as a dragon or some sort of subsequent being that decided to pillage a leprechaun's family. Or not even a leprechaun, just like someone else's family. And you, Kristen, as the medium of this story, are just interpreting the past life trauma in a different way that relates to their current life in order to rid them of this heinous crime that they've committed. Well, do you believe that... In um, magic. No. Do you believe that leprechauns exist? Yes. Yeah. What do they look like? (laughs) <laughs> they're kind of like fairies okay i can look uh i don't know i always see them as these brown little gremlin goblin looking things but they have this like this is biased but cringy trickstery energy yeah they have little trickster energy to them for sure 100 percent. they bite i hate leprechauns <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I, yeah, I I don't know. I feel like the most plausible thing for this, in, if you're not taking it for face value, is that you helped your wife overcome some sort of past life trauma or trauma of some sort as a medium. Because remembering as mediums, souls and spirits can only show you themselves in ways that make sense to you. So if they're not leprechauns and it wasn't a spirit guide, it could be a solar spirit that for whatever reason, in order to make the the situation amendable, showed themselves to you like that. But honestly. Yeah, but they, Christina didn't know they were a leprechaun. Yeah, but they had the hat. I feel like it's like when you see something and you can't remember what it's called, though. Exactly. 
Yeah. So it was probably a leprechaun. <laughs> That's how you know, you know? <laughs> it's a lot for me. I don't know how I can talk about it. <laughs> The only, the only solid opinion of it that I have is that your wife should feel ashamed of herself for not apologizing and should be just absolutely aghast by the fact that her spirit guide, like her mom, had to apologize for her. It's like when toddlers get into a fight on the playground and the one kid refuses to apologize to the other one because they smashed him in the face with like a sand sculpture or something. Coming from someone that has a past life as a leprechaun. Possibly. No, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> fight me all right we're uh we're gonna we're gonna do another one <laughs> all right so this one is called the healing power of my best buddy and it is by one of our patrons zal moon thank you zal for your submission of listener stories and if you also would like listener stories priority you can become a patreon by visiting the link in the show notes to learn more about it so zal says Not my story, but my boyfriend's. It's too cute not to share. So my boyfriend was far away on a work trip for a few days. Around the middle of the trip, he began having a really bad issue with one of his eyes. He thought it might have been an infection because it was swelling pretty bad. Since he was busy with work, he couldn't really get anything to help fix the problem and had actually planned on setting up a doctor's appointment for as soon as he got home since the issue only seemed to be getting worse. Two nights before he was supposed to come home, he had a dream. He was at the farm where he grew up, walking with his childhood dog. Mind you, this dog passed away a few years ago. As he was walking with him, the dog would roll over and he would rub his belly. This was something the dog really loved. He also remembered that the dog had not spoken out loud, but in his mind. He doesn't remember what his childhood pal was telling him during his dream, but he woke up crying, and his eye was no longer swollen or in pain. This is not the first time my boyfriend has been visited by his childhood dog either. The night after he passed away, he had a dream where he watched his dog grow from a puppy into an adult and he pet him one last time before he walked into a bridge of light. Boom. (laughs) That's the end. The end. What story is this? This is a story from Zal, one of our patrons, and Uh it's about her boyfriend's dog. What's it called? Oh, no, I found it. The healing powers of my best buddy. How do you see their dog? What do they look like? I don't see them any one way. I see them as like a medium-sized dog, kind of. That's different colored, if not brown or tan. And they're a boy. But I think, do you want my opinion or do you want me to tell me, tell you? Do you, you can want? tell me your opinion. Great. My opinion is that you had something or your boyfriend had something stuck in his eye, which is why it was swelling shut. And your, his dog did help him by giving him that dream and making him cry profusely without like irritating it in a way that when he was awake wouldn't have gotten anything out of it. But since he cried while he was asleep and his eye was closed, whatever was in his eye came out. So the dog did help him, oh my God. but it wasn't like spiritual magic where like the dog licked his eye or something and. He was spiritually, magically better. I think it was a little bit of both, but well, equal that's spiritual. Just how that worked, physical and spiritual aren't separated. Yeah, but some people would think that the the dog would come over as like a soul and like lick his hand, and then his arm's not broken anymore. I don't think it's like that. Well, yeah, you need to put physical energy behind something. So, like at the Madison Seminary, where the door shut on us. We were walking through the door. No one touched the door, but the physical energy of us walking through the door allowed the soul to manifest it closing. Physical energy and spiritual energy isn't separated. Yeah. It's naturally occurring. But that's how I think he healed his eye was by yeah. giving him the dream to make him cry in a state that got whatever was in there out. That's cute. Right? <laughs> it makes me happy. That's so cute. Are you ready? Yeah. It's called Reaper Blast by Tammy P. I am very sensitive to spirits and energies and have been opening myself up more the past few years to those gifts. One day I laid down to take a nap and had a crazy vivid dream where I was walking down a grungy street in a desert with a man I didn't recognize. I live in Tennessee, never been to the desert. 
I got the vibe that he was extremely religious. He was mad at me and complaining about my choice to become crystal pagan. I was trying to tell him all the personal reasons I wanted to pursue that faith. All of a sudden, I looked up across the street and saw what I just knew in my soul was a reaper. Oof, I love reapers. It didn't look like a traditional grim reaper. It looked like a very old, tall man in a suit with sunken black eyes. No scythe. The next second, he opened his mouth wide in a silent scream. Ooh, was he a banshee? And I immediately felt blasted backwards, falling into my bedroom. Everything at that point became extremely slow in motion. I was falling to my floor and could see small pieces of dust flying up around me as I fell. I waved my hands in front of me and they moved as if still in slow motion. At that point, my brain registered that I must be dreaming and falling out of bed. I began thinking I was about to either jerk away or hit the ground. Then, all of a sudden, I woke up peacefully in the middle of my bed, nowhere near the edge. It honestly felt like I had astral projected, but I had no idea. I've never had a dream that vivid before that I could feel it in my bones. I felt like the Reaper stopped me from talking to the man for some reason. Yeah, this one perplexes me, too. You're really just picking the ones that I don't want to think about. <laughs> I didn't read them before, and I just read the title. I know. <laughs> I feel like you may have been in another person's dream. Dreamwalker. Because in brain science, dreamy stuff, your brain cannot manifest new things. So you yourself may have been someone that this man saw so all of the like extras in the dreams that we have are actually people that we've seen even though you're like i've never seen that person in my life yes you have your brain just put it in like this little tiny box inside another box inside another box so when you're a medium and you see people while you're reading them does that fall in line yes why what do you mean if you are reading a person that passed You had never seen that person before, but you're seeing them. Yes. Yeah. When people show me pictures of their past loved ones, Mm -hmm. the characteristics that I see as a medium without looking at a picture is what I pay attention to, Mm -hmm. to say and dictate whether or not the picture they're showing me is correct. But do I see the person photo for photo in my mind versus the photo that they're showing me? No. My brain can't do that. (laughs) Just making sure. Oh, yeah. Because that's why I tell people, I'm like, you don't have to show me a photo, but if you want to, you can. But it doesn't help me because they're still going to give me just the characteristics that are important to you that will help you know who they're talking about. It doesn't matter that I necessarily see a picture. Yeah. So if I'm like, he's short, he has glasses, he's balding, he's white, his hair's around the corner of his head, and then they show me a picture and someone has those characteristics, I'm like... There you go. (laughs) Makes them feel better, not necessarily me. But when you're dreaming, your brain pulls from all of the people that you've seen because they can't make up things or it can't make up things that it hasn't experienced before. Pregnancy is hard. It really is. (laughs) Folding your legs. (laughs) So I feel like you were someone that this person had seen before, but for whatever weird spiritual reason, they also were a person that did not like your beliefs, which is why this Reaper dude was like, I'm going to control this dream for you because we kind of fucked it up a little bit because this is necessary for him and it's necessary for you, but it's not necessary to continue, which is why the taking away of the dream was so shocking for you. So I feel like you were in another person's dream, which is why, why you, you feel got- like that. Because they tell me it. (laughs) Oh. Yeah. It's a very clear yes when I ask about this. But they don't give me much more detail. It's very black and white. Because you being in his dream was beneficial for him to yell at someone about whatever his beliefs are. And it was beneficial for you to have someone talk to you about that. Because it's something you were going through in your life. But you saw this Reaper thing. Because your perception of metaphysical stuff is different. But that guy didn't see it. 
he probably just had a normal dream and he went into work the next day and was like, I had this dream about this girl that I was telling. She was crazy for being a Christian pagan. Was he a peacekeeper? The Reaper? Yeah. Because he is talking about how dream walkers and they're like, sometimes that happens and when it gets caught, we try to maintain the balance of things. Yeah. And she caught it, which is why she got ripped out of the dream. Because she wasn't supposed to be aware of his existence there and that it was not necessarily her dream. It was his dream. Kind of. I wonder if she lucid dreams a lot because they make me feel like you do that a lot. But in this dream, it was different because you were more lucid. It's like when people see the man. <laughs> they're, they're also talking about how a lot of times you don't remember because the peacekeeper things make you forget. Mm-hmm. But you walk around in people's dreams a lot. <laughs> I think we all do, honestly. It's just whether or not we realize it. All right, next one. This one is called My Mom's Spare Change by Sandra C. Sandra says, my mom died in July of 2016. Not long after, I felt her presence around me occasionally for months. After mopping the floor one day, I randomly found a penny where there was nothing a moment before. I grew suspicious. I would find pennies in random and odd places like as soon as I opened the car door to get out, I'd look down and there would be a penny. One day I said out loud, mom, you're a fancy girl. If this is you leaving the pennies, can you hook me up with something of higher amounts of money? <laughs> Valid. She's the tooth fairy. Sorry. <laughs> no joke. <laughs> Not long after asking for an increase, I started finding nickels, then dimes, then quarters, then a $1 bill. One day I was given a scratch ticket at work and I won $10 and so on. My son and I found so much change that we started a grandma box where we store all the coins and cash we find and receive. On my mom's birthday in 2016, three months after her passing, I stopped at a store. I got the idea to have my son choose a scratch ticket and we ended up winning $200. It was most definitely grandma giving her grandson a gift from the beyond. Wasn't that an adorable story from Sandra? What do you think is happening? I think her mom leaves her change. I've read or listened to a lot of like paranormal stories where loved ones have died and they will. Okay. I actually gave a reading to somebody once and their grandfather would always give like money gifts to all of the grandchildren when he was alive. And for whatever reason, dimes were his thing. So when his great granddaughter was born, she would find dimes on her birthday every year <laughs> and it was funny because during the reading I was like there's this man here he makes me feel like he's a great grandpa yada 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 and I was like what's with change or like dimes or something because he showed me how my brother used to whip dimes at me to hurt me and she like immediately broke down and was like that's my great grandfather <laughs> I don't know why but leaving spare change with human souls is like a thing well they show me you know when Mulan with the little cricket yeah, it's good luck. Yeah, but I don't know that she was doing it. I feel like she had something that works with her do it for her. Something that's closer to the physical realm? Yeah. That the soul of Sandra's mom used? Yeah, they're like, I don't know if it's a Fabian because they're like tied to people. Maybe it's like a cherub or something. Mm, maybe. Because angels deal with people. I don't know. I see like a little tiny thing. It's like golden. I don't know. It looks like a cricket. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I know it only looks like a cricket because that's what it's using to describe what it does. Makes sense. But it gives me like how fairies are associated to different parts of nature. Mm hmm. So I don't know. It's adorable either way. Yeah. <laughs> I would okay. like my grandmother who's passed to give me a lottery ticket that wins maybe i'll do that and i'll let you know how it goes <laughs> okay you ready mm -hmm. spirit with no eyes by Alyssa v hello meta psychics so i used to visit my grandmother's at her duplex when i was a little girl i'd say i was around four years old and it was an older duplex in daytona florida i had an experience 
Something that creeped me out so badly, I can remember running out of the house. So, there was this bathroom in her hallway, and I was in there washing my hands. Across the hall from the bathroom was my grandmother's media room, saints room she had. Yeah, so like when your parents had a media room, it was like the living room. What's a saint's room? It was her Santeria room. Oh, okay. Sorry, like, uh, autocorrect. Got so you. where you watch Teletubbies and like the house in the like, big blue bear, they also had Santeria. Great. I should explain that my grandmother is also a psychic and she usually has a room where she did Santeria. So on one side of the media room, there was uh, an area full of saints, almost like an altar with candles. Anyways, I can remember I was coming out of that bathroom when I felt like I heard something in the other room that sounded like typing. Suddenly, I got this feeling like I was going to see something, so I peered around the bathroom corner only to see an older lady or thing appear. It had long white hair and no eyes. I was frozen in the moment, but after I had processed everything, I ran the fuck out of the house and to the safety of my grandmother where she was gardening. I don't remember what happened after that, but I can remember that lady traumatized me. Since that experience, I've had a weird vibe with that house. It just seems dark and feels very heavy. So yeah, after that, I didn't stay there very much, Thank God my grandmother ended up moving out of there to a new home. That's one of my most creepiest experiences ever. I think it was one of the Santeria deities that your grandma was working with. 100% because she tells me that she's there because someone summoned her there. And she's not bad, but she's not good, which is kind of how I feel about Santeria without knowing too much about it. Oh, well, she thinks she's, she's funny. Probably, if I was a Santeria deity, I also would probably think I was funny. Because they're telling me about, like, I don't know where this is coming from, but, like, those children movies about ghosts where the ghost comes out and they look like a normal person, but they make themselves, like, look really scary. Mm -hmm. That's what's happening. Uh. I think she looks like a normal person, but she was like, this is going to be great. (laughs) I'm going to scare the shit out of this kid. (laughs) That's funny. Yeah, I... My opinion of Santeria is solely based on the limited information that I know about it and the fact that every time I've encountered a client who has been to some sort of seance that is from Santeria, they're always very scared. (laughs) Like one of my clients bought a reading for their husband and their only impression of being in a medium circle was a Santeria seance where during that time, this this person just got really, really scared and said it was a horrible experience having the Santeria seance. And that's the only thing that I've had people tell me about Santeria is that it scares them. <laughs> this poor person about Santeria. This poor person was so scared. They're like, you're not going to do like what happened at the Santeria seance, right? And I was like, what fucking happened? I don't okay. know. <laughs> but I wouldn't talk about it, but they were scared. They were scared of me because they thought it was going to be like whatever happened there. And maybe that's not a good representation of Santeria, but I know nothing about it. Literally zero percent. Okay. So the only thing I understand about it is that a lot of baseball players have Santerian heritage Mm -hmm. and it's kind of like, so you have the Creole religions of like hoodoo and voodoo. Yeah. Santeria is like the latin island sort of religion that's like those other ones got you kind of like how christianity and catholicism are similar but not and if you say that they are people get upset (laughs) got it yeah so anyways jesus christ i feel like you had your one of your grandma's deities in there and they're just like what em said (laughs) yeah because they're very funny. They have very funny energy. Everything is very hot and spicy in Santeria. It's also how I feel oh. about it. That's the general vibe I get. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, it's my turn to pick something. Sorry. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what else to say. This is some funny deity. 
Which is funny because if she moved to a different place, um, wouldn't the deity also go there? Oh, you're saying that she was summoned to that location. Yeah. Got it. So I assume when she left, she either stuck around or just dwindled away because whoever put her there is no longer there. So she's like, I don't need to be here anymore. Mm hmm. Okay. This one's for you since the universe has been giving you no all the time and uh, you're in your Saturn return. Yeah. This one's for you. So this person put their title as there is a man in silver and blue and a woman in purple. And this is by Sarah S. Sarah S, we've met you and I like you. That's all. This story isn't spoopy unless validation and full circle moments give you the heebie-jeebies. Sarah says, about six months ago, I started realizing my psychicness slash abilities. Your channel was a huge part and so was my own spiritual awakening. There have been core moments that really shaped my journey and that follow me. Most of the time, these moments are explained through my guides and lessons. The first of these, quote, core moments happened probably only a few days after I began to realize that I might have things in my head that are not for me. I'd lay down on my love seat on my back porch. It was early in the morning and I was not planning on meditating, but closed my eyes and relaxed. My mind was busy, but quiet too. Then a whisper, almost like a whoosh of air, said, there's a lady in purple. It was so obvious it was not my voice. After I tried to get more information about this, quote, lady in purple, I went back inside and ended up laying down on my couch. A few minutes later, the same thing happened, but the whisper says, there's a man in silver and blue. For the past few months, I've tried to figure out what this meant and who the heck this man and woman were. I thought it might have been the souls from the graveyard I used to live next to, but I was never confident in that idea. Fast forward to today, and I'm sitting with Emily over Zoom for my first spirit guide reading. She explains I have two blue guides. She tells me about my stone guide. He then told me his name was Bob and he doesn't like being referred to as rock monster because he has stone and not a monster. I had absolutely no idea he was there until she told me. She described him as nine feet tall, gray stone, human looking with very buff veiny arms. <laughs> Maybe he ate some pizza. I don't know. And his veins are different colors. Now that I'm getting to know him, he feels like a mountain. So if you took a picture of a mountain landscape or made a color palette for it, those are the colors that move through him. So as we move on, I ask about my dreams and M puts her head to the right and then says, sorry, there's a woman in purple who stepped forward. That was my missing puzzle piece. And wham, bam, thank you fucking ma'am. Almost like Bob himself punched me in the head. I knew he was like the man in silver and blue. How do I know this? I don't fucking know. His stone is a gray silver and he is a blue guide. Honestly, these things are whack, so there could be more to it. It was the woman in purple that slapped me with the full circle knowledge because Emily described the woman I had imagined. She is a spirit who helps me deal with my past and my trauma. So yeah, my guides were like, whisper, whisper, hi, it's us. Whisper, whisper, this won't make sense for a while. Whisper, whisper, but whisper when it fucking whisper does. It's gonna make so much sense, young grasshopper. Whisper, whisper. So was this a reading with me? <laughs> I'm Who just, the fuck I'm does just making sure because I'm freaked out. Everything's fine. <laughs> who the fuck does spirit guide readings and who else is named M? I, I have a very common name. Okay. <laughs> the end of it also says, thank you, M, for giving me this really meaningful validation. I love you. You tell. Well, <laughs> you're giving me validation. Everything's fine. I'm fine. If you're not crying, I'm going to cry. But I'm also pregnant, so it's fine. <laughs> Immediately starts crying. <laughs> God damn. In case you wanted to read that, I know you needed it. And if anyone else needs something like that, or you feel like you've been communicating with your spirit guides, but you don't know, maybe yeah. just reading that will help you. <laughs> and you'll get a wham, bam, thank you, man, too. Also, Sarah, I added a couple fucks in there just for emphasis. <laughs> <laughs> Three fire signs. Can't help it. No. <laughs> you got one more for us? Oh, we're doing another one again. Yeah, that one's kind of self-explanatory. Like, they read your reading. <laughs> yeah, I so know. <laughs> to do it. But I know you're feeling sad, so there, that's that's for you today. I also gave you half a Pop-Tart and a donut. Sugar and kind words. Grandma's house. <laughs> okay. You ready? This one's called It's a Sign by Savannah F. What if it's not a sign? I guess we're going to find out. Okay. 
So last night I was watching some videos of you guys and I was specifically watching your videos on spirit guides, spiritual teams. I paused the video, cleared my mind and spoke aloud to my guides, asking them to send me signs that everything is okay and just to confirm how I've been feeling recently. I told them to send me butterflies for yes and ladybugs for no. And just to confirm, send the number three. An hour had passed. I had just gotten out of the bath and was searching for my bobby pins that literally seemed to just disappear into thin air. Fucking same. I mean. They reappear in Bradley's truck and in the vacuum cleaner, according to him. He hates it. He does. (laughs) Something told me to look in this pink plant holder that I had honestly forgotten I had had. I got a feeling that there would be my bobby pins inside it. So I pulled it down, and to my amazement, all of my pins were in there. I started to pin my hair up, and on the last pin, I realized that the plant holder was a ladybug and a blue butterfly necklace I completely forgot about. It was a spiritual confirmation I needed. I was overwhelmed with emotions. I just have to say thank you to you guys. I feel as if my guides purposely introduced me to your YouTube channel, and what you two do is truly amazing and so helpful. Don't ever feel like what you do isn't worth it because it is. Two people I've never met have changed my life so much and gave me the push I needed and to help. It's truly amazing. Then the daycare I've been trying to get my son into called me and said he was past the accepted age for the program. They couldn't accept him. I cried when the woman on the phone told me this, but then hours later, exactly 3.33 p.m., The daycare called me back to tell me the circumstances have changed and my son could be accepted. If that isn't validation, I don't know what is. You guys have changed my life. Aw, Savannah, you guys change our lives, honestly, with how you make us feel like we're not crazy because every reading, I feel like I'm crazy until the end of it. And then I'm like, damn, that was a good reading. This is fun. I like this. I like talking to people, whether they're alive or dead. This is great. (laughs) Lol. <laughs> Anyways, that is that for this listener's episode. If you're interested in more episodes like this, please go to the show notes and click on the link below to submit your spooky or paranormal story or just the feel good ones that help validate that you too are embracing your spiritual side to any capacity that you feel is fun, fit and fabulous. Because let's be real. That's what spirituality is about. Making people feel good. Yes. I got a dad joke for you because if you also oh. would like. <laughs> no, it's okay. I got one. If you feel so inclined, please feel free to rank our podcast on Apple Podcasts. Leave a dad joke in your review. Please rank us on Spotify or leave a comment if you're listening on our Meta Psychics Extra channel on YouTube because we also post our podcast there. But Katie G likes to listen to our podcast on the YouTubes and they left us a fabulous dad joke. You ready? Yeah. What did the ghost teacher say to the class? Dinkelberg. No. (laughs) What did the ghost teacher say to the class? This is where I would put a trophy. If I had one. Dinkelberg. Watch the board while I go through it again. I don't get it. Because she's going to go through it, you know? I don't know how that helps children learn. Maybe she was just like, get out of my hair. I need a coffee break. And then just phasmophobia it out of the board. Listen, one of our patrons told us a joke. And I immediately afterwards was like, I don't get it. And then they proceeded to explain it. And I was like, I still don't get it. And then they proceeded to explain it again. And I was like, dude, I'm goading you. I'm sorry. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Cheese it. Pocket parm. <laughs> Wow! Oh, I can't reach it. We are your meta sci kicks. Honestly, though, pocket palm for the win. And if you don't know, we're using pocket parm to exorcise the demons. That's all you need to know.